Before we talk about multiplying and dividing fractions, let's look at a little bit of fraction vocabulary. Here's an example of a fraction, 3 fourths. Remember that the top number up here is called the numerator, and the bottom number is called the denominator. I go back and forth between using numerator and top and denominator and bottom, but they're great vocabulary for you to be familiar with. This number here, the 3 fourths, is something that's called a simplified or a reduced fraction. In order to be simplified or reduced, you need to be able to check to see if there are any numbers that will go into both the numerator and the denominator. In this case, three, there's the only way to get three is three. The only way to get four is two times two. There are no common factors that we can go through and look at. Here's another example. Let's look at this fraction, 14 over 21. This is not an example of a reduced or simplified fraction because seven could be divided evenly into both the top and the bottom. If I divide the top by seven, I can get two. If I divide the bottom by seven, I can get three. And now two thirds becomes a simplified and reduced solution. Now, when we're trying to simplify numbers, sometimes our values are very, can be very large. So take, for example, this fraction. Suppose we have 210 over 308. 14 and 21, I kind of knew what those factors were from practice. These numbers get really big and aren't in my standard times tables. So when you're asked to simplify large fractions like this, just go ahead and try to start with anything easy that you see first. The quicker that we can get these numbers small, the better. In this example, because the top number ends in zero and the bottom in eight, these are both even numbers. So I know that two can go evenly into both the top and the bottom. When I go ahead and to simplify that, if I divide the top by two, 210 divided by two gives me 105. When I go to divide the bottom by two, 308 divided by two, gives me 154. All right, so still pretty big. At least the numbers are a little bit smaller. But I don't see anything immediately that, that I can divide by. Now that this ends in a 5, 2 is not going to go into it anymore. I do have a strategy that I generally follow when I'm trying to simplify things. And that is I go through the prime numbers to check to see if any of these will go in. So for example, in the 105 over 154, two does not go in evenly into either of those solutions. So then I can try three. If I do 105 divided by three, it goes in evenly, but 154 divided by three gives me a decimal value, so that doesn't work. Then I can check five. Five will go into the top. I can see that because it ends in a five. Um, remember, if it's divisible by five if it ends in a five or a zero. 154, though, 5 does not go into that evenly. The next prime number to try is 7. So let's try that. If I divide 105 by 7, that, goes, that actually does go in evenly. It goes in 15 times. And if I divide the bottom by 7, it also happens to go in evenly and goes in 22 times. So as I go through and look at this final solution then, I can still go up and try a couple of other prime numbers. Uh, notice after seven, the next prime number is 11, and then 13 and so on. But 11 is way too big to go into 15, and so I'm really as simplified as I possibly can get at this point. 15 is three times five, 22 is two times 11, and there's nothing else that will go into both of those. So this becomes a simplified and reduced um, solution. So if you get stuck, again, I just kind of methodically go through each of these. Really, you don't have to try any more than those. Um, and we're just checking to see if the numbers go in evenly when you divide. Why do we talk about simplifying fractions? Well, it really helps us to multiply a lot. When we need to multiply fractions, our value our process is pretty straightforward. In order to multiply fractions, all that we want to do is multiply across, oops,
across the top of the fractions and then also multiply across the bottom of the fractions. So pretty straightforward and works really well. Let's take a look at an example here. Suppose that, let's move this up a little bit here. Suppose that I have 5 over 12 and I want to multiply it by 6 over 7. All I need to do is multiply the numbers across the top. 5 times 6 gives me 30. Multiply across the bottom. 12 times 7 gives me 84. And then before you finish your solution, you should check to see if you can reduce your answers here at all. The first thing I notice as I look at this is that, again, I have uh, both are even numbers. So I can divide both the top and the bottom by 2. That will give me 15 over um, 42. 2 won't go into them anymore, so I can check 3 real quick. 3 does happen to go into both of these answers. If I divide the top by 3, I get 5. If I divide the bottom by 3, I get 14. And now I'm as simplified as I can get. There's nothing that will go into both 5 and 14. So when we do multiplication, a lot of times we get values like this and they come through and get, um, get to the point where we'll need to do some, some major simplification at the end of the problem. All right. Well, with multiplying, we can actually kind of do a little bit of a trick here to keep the multiplied numbers from getting too big. For example, if I wanted to multiply 5 over 12 and 6 over 7, the process that we did before was to divide numbers on the top and the bottom. Um, we can do that right now with any numbers that are on the top and any numbers that are on the bottom in order to get my fractions smaller. So for example, um, when I look at this, I can see that 2 goes into both the 6 and the 12. In fact, I can see that 6 would go into both the 10 and the 12. So at this point, I can divide the top by 6 and divide the bottom by 6. And what that will leave me here with is 5 over dividing the 12 by 6 to reduce that out. Uh, it gives me 2 on the bottom. Here, I can divide the top by 6 and get 1 over 7. The advantage of doing this is it's much easier to see what numbers go in nicely um, when the numbers are small. So we can do that before we actually do our multiplication. And now that we've found common values here with the small ones, we multiply straight across the top, straight across the bottom, and of course come up with exactly the same solution. So this uh, sometimes you'll have heard this called canceling. Uh, sometimes you'll just cross those out and write numbers next to them. If that's something you're familiar with, go for it. Um, otherwise, I really like to kind of pay attention. What am I dividing the top and the bottom by in order to make my values as simple as possible? So that's really all the, all the process that there is to multiplying with fractions. Let's take a peek here at dividing with fractions. When we divide with fractions, we actually are going to use our multiplication rules, which is great. We really, anytime that we need to divide fractions, we're going to change our fractions into a multiplication problem, or change our division of fractions into a multiplication of fractions problem. To do that, what we're going to do is we're going to change the division to multiplying. We've, of course, changed the problem at that point. So we're going to keep the problem by, balanced by multiplying by the fractions reciprocal that comes after. The reciprocal is basically the flip of a fraction. If you, whatever is on top is going to move to the bottom, whatever, and, um, whatever's on the bottom is going to move to the top. Let's take a look at a couple of examples here. So the reciprocal again, a lot of times I'll use the word flip as I'm doing that. Let's suppose that we want to divide 4 over 15 divided by 9 over 4. We're dividing fractions. We don't like dividing fractions. So what we're going to do is we're going to change the problem. Start with the 4 fifteenths. Instead of divide, we're now going to multiply, and then we're going to flip the fraction over that comes afterwards. So 9 over 4 flips to be 4 over 9. And now I can just follow the rules that I did before. Multiply straight across the top and straight across the bottom. 
and then simplify the answer or see if there's any simplification that can go on at this step. Um, notice the only things that go into four are two. Both of these are odd numbers on the bottom. So I really can't do any simplification here at all. Just multiply across the top. Four times four is 16. Multiply across the bottom. 15 times nine is um, a bigger number than what I planned for. Um, to do, 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 do 15 times 9, 45, 135. My notes were bad. There we go. And that's going to be my reduced solution. 16 over 135. Uh, one last example here. Let's suppose that we need to do something like 2 thirds divided by 4. Now, we know we're dividing with fractions because we have a fraction here. When I go to try to change my problem, remember we have two thirds, change the divide to times, but then I have to multiply by the reciprocal or flip of four. Four doesn't look like a fraction now, but recall that you can turn any number you want into a fraction by putting it over one. So now if I think of dividing by four, I'm dividing by four over one. So when I flip it, I have one over four. Again, Check now that we're at a multiplication problem, we can check to see if there are any common factors on the top and bottom we can divide out. In this case, we can divide the top and bottom each by two here. Two divided by two gives me a one on top over three times the one on top here. Four divided by two gives me a two on the bottom. I can multiply straight across. One times one gives me one. Three times two gives me six. And I come up with my solution for the division problem.